Hey, what's up everyone? Josh here. I've got two items to ship out today. The first one's a classic DVD, Forrest Gump. That one sold for $3.49 plus shipping. And the second item is actually the second baseball bat that I've sold this week, but that sold for $80 plus shipping and I picked it up for around $4 to $5. I don't ever pay more than $5 for baseball bats at yard sales, but good sale there. Let me bring you over to my coffee table and let's pack these things up and get them ready to ship out. And actually before we do that, I just want to say if you're new to this channel, I am a reseller. So I buy things for cheap at yard sales, thrift stores, local marketplaces like OfferUp, LetGo, Facebook Marketplace. But I buy these things for cheap and I resell them online on places like eBay or Poshmark and I sell them for a profit. So if you want to see videos like that and you want to follow me on my reselling journey, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I put up new videos. But with that being said, let's continue with the video. Okay, so the first item is Forrest Gump, a really good DVD, a classic. But these DVDs, they fit nicely in this small eBay bubble mailers. You know, DVDs, they aren't like huge profit, huge money makers, but they're super easy to list. I take like two or three photos and packing and shipping them out is super easy. I can just put them in this bubble mailer, seal it up, and it's good to go. All right, so this is the baseball bat that sold for $80. I picked this up like four or $5 at a garage sale. Pretty good profit here and a pretty good sale. The way I'm gonna ship this up, I'm gonna bubble wrap it. And then I have these two small mailing tubes and they're not quite long enough for the bat. So I'm gonna Frankenbox them together. I did order some medium mailing tubes and hopefully that'll fit the bats that I'm selling a bit more nicely. But while I'm waiting for those, I just ordered them. So still waiting for those to come in. Since these small mailing tubes are what I have, I'll make it work. So let me get some bubble wrap and wrap this up. So I'm just gonna lay down the bubble wrap flat and roll up the baseball bat. And honestly, like one layer should be good enough. And then I'll just tape it down a little bit just to secure the bubble wrap onto the bat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick my eBay thank you card onto the bubble wrap. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do, so I'm gonna set up the two boxes to the approximate length that I want it. Okay. Right here should be good. And just so it's secure and doesn't bounce around on the inside, I'm actually going to tape it down to one side of the box. And that should help secure it and prevent it from bouncing around inside while it's shipping. And I'm just gonna fold this up. And these mailing tubes are kind of like a puzzle, so they have these end pieces that you can put into these notches. So all I have to do is fold this corner piece down and fit these notches into the slots. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have the inside box put together and the outside box probably isn't gonna fit as nicely. So I was able to get this end piece in, but where the two boxes overlap, I'm not able to nicely put these two pieces together. So I'll just fold them in as tight as I can and then tape it down. I'm gonna cut this end piece off here. All right, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take down this area right here where the seams are, just so the two pieces are tight together and it's a bit more firm. And then I'll probably put like two or three more layers of tape just to hold the two pieces together tightly. Let me go ahead and do that. So pretty much what I did was wherever the two mailing tubes met, so all of these joints, wherever I felt it was a bit more fragile and not sturdy, I reinforced it with some tape. And I'd say it's pretty sturdy now and I'm confident that it'll make it to the buyer. 
And for these mailing tubes, they fold in nicely and fit together like a puzzle. So let me go ahead and do that. So it fits together nicely like that. And I did the same thing for the other end. Okay, this package should be ready to go. It's pretty sturdy now. I reinforced a bunch of the ends with tape. And all I need to do now is weigh it on my scale and slap a shipping label on it. So good to go. Okay, I decided to do a quick Marshalls run today and I just wanted to do a quick haul for you guys. So let me flip the camera onto the product and show you guys what I picked up. Okay, so the first thing I picked up were these two North Face American flag slippers and I paid 15 bucks for both of them. And the comps were a little all over the place. I'll put it up on the screen, but they were selling from anywhere between 35 to around $90. I'll probably list these for around 75, 80 bucks and see how they do. But I mean, for $15 each, for these USA themed North Face slippers, I mean, definitely couldn't go wrong with this pickup. Next thing I picked up, I picked up one, two, three of these pink Polaroid sweaters. I just thought they looked pretty cool. I paid 20 bucks for these and they're copping out to around 45 to $50. So I'll probably price them at $50 and see how they do. I mean, these are just a cool piece. So I picked up three of these. I picked up one, two of these white Polaroid sweaters and these were comping out around the same, like 45, 50. I paid 20 bucks for these as well. And I mean, these are just a clean sweater. Should be able to double my money here and cool little color strip. So hopefully I do well on these. Next item, I have this pink PlayStation hoodie. The original PlayStation says Japan 1994. Paid 20 bucks for these as well. None of these hoodies were on clearance at Marshalls, but they were all comping around 40 plus dollars. So I definitely felt like these were worth the investment. They were unique enough pieces for me to pick them up. And this last item here is a PlayStation black hoodie. This is another cool and unique piece, I thought, and this was $20 as well. And it was comping out for 40 plus dollars, so thought it was unique, thought it was cool, and decided to pick this up. So, I mean, there's definitely good opportunity in stores like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, and Ross. The thing is, you won't pick things up for like a dollar or two. You definitely have to pay up at stores like this. I paid $15 for those North Face American flag slippers and then 20 bucks a piece for the sweaters. But I mean, I think the ROI is definitely there and you know, you gotta spend money to make money. So those slippers I picked up for $15 a pair and I'm gonna list them at like $75, $80 and see how those do. And these sweaters, bought them at $20 a piece and I'm gonna list them anywhere from 45 to $50 and see how those do. It might take a little bit for all of them to sell, but I think of these clothing pieces as long-term investments and you know, I'm pretty confident that all of these are gonna sell over time. Now I'll make my money back plus a hefty profit. So, you know, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Burlington, Ross, Dress for Less, you know, all of those kinds of stores, there's definitely a good opportunity there. Like I said, you got to pay up for the products that you find there. You know, even though you're paying up the ROI, the return on investment is definitely there. And, you know, I only pick up things that I'm confident are going to sell. So even though these might not sell like overnight, but I'm confident that I'll make my money back in no time and, you know, pull in a profit off of these purchases. I just wanted to share that with you guys real quick. Hope you guys are enjoying the content that I'm pushing out. Hope you guys are learning something. And you know, I'm enjoying sharing my reselling journey with you all. So once again, if you aren't subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you already are, I appreciate the support. Make sure to hit that like button. Leave a comment below. You know, I love interacting with you all. So leave a comment. I'll make sure to get back to you. And until next time, bye.